when we set up everything, we get everything in alignment. Now, one of the first ways to start teaching that is to make sure that the hip stays forward and the chest stays here. So now we can kind of push from this position and we're gonna slide out that kick leg and then we can kind of move into the power position. It's Eric Johnson from Airtate Throws Nation, and in this video, we are going part three on how to teach the glide to beginning shot putters. Now, in the first two videos, we have moved a little quickly, but we wanted to make sure that these basic kind of principles are understood. It's not that complicated when you understand what to do, and that's what our throwing chain reaction is about. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about exclusively is setting up your chain reaction, and that is something we're just gonna touch base on, and of course, if you want more information on that system, be sure to click the link below. Somewhere around here, we probably have a, a link to a free quick class, and that will kind of expand on a lot of these principles and how you structure the throw. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about part three, which is putting the whole throw together. And what we talked about in the first two videos, kind of understanding the, 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 begin, you know, the delivery, kind of getting to the middle, moving into that power position. And now we're gonna to put together the full throw. And this is where the glide tends to run into a lot of difficulty for a lot of young kids. Now, you see a lot of kids, they set up. Now, one of the things we teach is we teach our how we set everything up. What's our alignment? How do we create this hinge where we're on balance? That's really key. And so one of the things that we're gonna have our athletes do is set up, and we want to avoid this kind of thing. One of the key things that's gonna help you guys out there is you've gotta get your athletes on balance. So we see a lot of kids, they do this, and then they pull in, and as soon as they pull in, they're falling. Now, some people, out there for years have coached, you want to unseat, you want the hips to go. And we don't disagree with that, but there's a right way and a wrong way for that to move. And there is a pull the leg in, chest pops up and the hips fall and then try to go. That's the wrong way. And that's what most kids are setting up. What we call inside the throwing chain reaction, right, is what actions are going to be amplified for better reactions across the circle or what are going to set up off balance positions that are going to create reactions that are not going to help throw further, right? Are going to, they're not going to help the thrower to increase distance. So one of the things we talk about is when we set up everything, we get everything in alignment. Now one of the first ways to start teaching that is to make sure that the hip stays forward and the chest stays here. So now we can kind of push from this position and we're gonna slide out that kick leg and then we can kind of move into the power position. So you're gonna notice as I start at the back of the ring here, I'm gonna slide down, stretch everything out, I'm gonna feel a push off of this and I can do what we call is our glide shuffle. So we have a side shuffle and then we have the glide shuffle. These are both, these are two things that are progressions inside our system and we go of course into greater depth on how that works. But this is a really easy way to start getting your athletes comfortable with keeping the head and the shoulders back. Head may be looking down a little bit. The shoulders have to stay back. One of the biggest mistakes is that as soon as throwers go, they start to open up the upper body, then they come here. Now I'm no longer in this position that we talked about in the first two videos. So the key thing is when you guys set up, notice what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a nice alignment. I'm gonna do what we call as a coil, which is part of our pillar two. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna see me as I drop, this is part of what we're teaching is pillar three. So we're learning how to stretch out, how to maintain the chest down and not feel this kind of angle, which causes a fall in a late kick leg. We're trying to get our athletes used to feeling the kick leg out and to push off of this. This is you kind of your classic A-frame glide drill. And you'll notice when I push here off this heel, I'm opening up. So when we start with a glide shuffle, we're gonna drop down, so we're loaded because we wanna be able to push, and then we're gonna be feeling this here. So I have the kick leg already extended, it's gonna touch, and it's essentially gonna stay long, and this starts to teach the athlete this type of feeling, where they feel this here, right? And you're gonna notice when I land, even in the glide, I'm not trying to land with a straight glide leg, I'm trying to land with a bent block leg, okay? When I say glide leg, I meant kick leg. Okay, so remember, this is the thing. You'll go to your 
shuffle. And what we talk about is setting up here. Keep your hips on top of the foot. That's the big trick. So as I push, I'm still, I'm still in this position. I can get the foot to turn into the throw. And of course, I'm gonna be focusing on as I drop and I move into this position, the shoulders and the head stay back. That's gonna help me to feel this kind of naturally move into the T. When kids start to do this and they pull around, they're coming through and they're kind of rotating out of a glide. And remember, we're trying to keep that shot put on a really straight line. So this is the easy way to go. Then from there, it's very easy as they start to feel that is to keep that up, to pull that leg in and feel to get into that position and eliminate the shuffle and move into that full glide. So just to recap, the keys here are gonna be staying on top in a nice starting line, eyes and chest facing back, feeling the reach over this way with everything, and then feeling how the kick leg stays long to move here, so that way when I start to transition and I start to pull and I start to feel this position, I'm gonna to try to be keeping everything back, holding it hard, and then that's gonna set me up into that very straight, the same position that we worked in video one and video two on how to work through into that finish. And now they'll be, should be doing a pretty good glide. Now, if you'd like more information on how to take this glide A to Z, that's what our throwing chain reaction system does. But for a lot of you, we wanna help you guys, coaches out there improve the sport, we wanna help more kids, put you on the right track, doing the right things. And that's what we try to do with these videos. The system is for the hardcore that are ready to take things up multiple notches super fast. And that's what the Throwing Chain Reaction System is about. And that's where, if you wanna join our list of over a thousand members, we'd love to see you there. Click the link below. But thanks so much for watching today's video. We hope this series for Glide 101 was helpful. And we really hope to see you on the next video. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment below, and see you guys on the next video.